Okay, magandang gabi po. So, I was summoned today to discuss the law and partnerships. <coughs> Sorry. So tired na. Anyway, so dito po ako ngayon sa aming sala kasi ginagawa ang aking kwarto. So welcome everybody for tonight's free webinar from Rio. And uh, I am Nico Soriano. We will be your uh, RFBT reviewer for Rio. And today we'll be discussing the law and partnerships which according to the TOS of the BOA currently no, would account for 10 questions or 10% okay, of the entire RFBT subject in the board exam. So let's begin. So a contract of partnership is governed by the civil code and the civil code provides for its definition that this is a contract whereby two or more persons bind themselves to contribute money, property, or industry to a common fund with the intention of dividing the profits among themselves in or in order to exercise a profession. From the very definition, we can at least get four characteristics of uh, partnership already. No? So the first is that it is a consensual character which is perfected by mere consent. Because the definition is by a contract of partnership, okay, the parties bind themselves. So from the moment that they bind themselves, there is already a perfected contract of partnership. Okay. We consider it as a bilateral or a multilateral contract because it is entered into between two or more persons or otherwise stated no one person can create no, a partnership. And each of the partners will have their respective obligations. Now, we call it a nominate contract not only because it is designated by a specific name in the civil code no, but more precisely because there are specific rules that will apply primarily to a, com to a contract of partnership only okay and <clears throat> it is a principal contract in the sense that there is no need for a different contract for its validity no or its existence will not depend on the existence of another contract we also consider it as onerous because from the very definition sabi the partners contribute money property or industry which means in order to become a partner then there must be some form of contribution on the part of the partners no, or the parties to the contract. But we also consider this one as a preparatory contract like, as uh, enunciated by the purpose. No? Kasi ang idea, kaya pinapasok ang contract ng partnership is that so that the parties can enter into other contracts no? to meet their goals of either dividing the profits amongst themselves or to exercise a common profession. All right? Now, <clears throat> the principles, Latin maxim principles that apply, dalawa ito, no? apply to a contract of partnership will be first affect social societies. No? This is the desire to formulate an active union with people among whom there exists mutual confidence and trust. So our premise is that in order to form a partnership, the desire must be there no? in order to have a valid partnership. This principle, including the second one, which is delectus personae, are applicable um, most applicable when we get later on no, to the dissolution because the idea is that uh, a partner must uh, will no, or gusto niya dapat na nandun siya sa partnership and be partners with the others. Kaya nga merong mutual confidence and trust. In the idea na mawala ang mutual confidence and trust or basta ayo na ng partner, he can cause the dissolution of the partnership even before no, the fulfillment of a specific undertaking or the arrival of a specified period okay? because of delectus personae or what we call personal choices no, as translated. Okay? So the idea is that the partner can choose no, kung sino ang gusto niyang maging partners at basta meron ng isa na ayaw niya, then pwede na siyang humiwalay or to, <clears throat> we call this, to uh, dissolve the partnership at will. Okay? Now, so the purpose of a partnership, as we have already mentioned, can either be for dividing the profits among themselves. So this particular purpose will be applicable to business partnerships or what we call partnership for profits. No? And the other one will be to exercise a common profession or what we call general professional partnerships. But nevertheless, no, in all material respects, the object of the partnership must be lawful. Otherwise, if it is illegal, like for example, ang purpose nila is to distribute and sell drugs, no? then it can be declared dissolved by judicial decree and whatever profits that the partnership uh, 
earned no will be confiscated in favor of the government or the state okay now we normally compare a partnership with the corporation. In fact, that is part of the syllabus in the TOS, no? the, the comparison between a partnership and a corporation. So as to its creation, the partnership is a consensual contract which is uh, perfected by the mere consent of the parties, whereas a corporation uh, can be formed uh, under either a special law, no? dapat yan special charter, or by a general enabling law or the corporation code. And under the corporation code, okay, uh, a private corporation okay, can only be created through a uh, general enabling law, which is our corporation code. And the beginning of the personality of the corporation generally will be upon issuance of the certificate of registration. No? or the Certificate of Incorporation compared to a partnership that is perfected by mere consent. Okay? Now, as to the number of organizers, a partnership can be formed with two or more persons, whereas a corporation can be incorporated uh, with not more than 15 incorporators. With the advent of what we call a one-person corporation, pwede na kahit isa lang ang stockholder at incorporator. No? In fact, pwede na rin kahit dalawa, tatlo o apat ang incorporators. Okay? As to the existence, there is no time limit okay, as to a partnership. So hanggat partner sila, pwede yung mag-continue. No? Unlike a corporation under the old corporation code that can exist only for not more than 50 years. But as you may be aware at this point, under the revised corporation code, uh, corporation now has perpetual existence, which is still no, different to a partnership. Okay? The liability of the partners is unlimited in the sense that they can be liable up to their personal or private properties as compared to a corporation where the liability of the stockholders will only be limited to its uh, to their uh, their capital contributions okay now in a partnership generally you cannot no transfer the interest of a partner without the consent of the others but when we talk about interest here it is the ownership no as opposed to what we will discuss later as what constitutes interest. Compared to a corporation or an ordinary stock corporation for that matter, uh, will not need the consent of the other stockholders. No? In fact, as a general rule, wala namang restrictions on the transfer of shares unless there is um, a restriction provided in the articles and in the stock certificate at the same time. No? Now, in partnerships, generally the partners will be regarded as agents and their acts can be binding to third parties even if they don't have actual authority. No? Kung meron lang apparent authority, pwede na. Unlike in a corporation where the management and the direction of the corporation is always handled by a board of directors. Okay? Hindi lahat ng stockholders are involved. No? Except with regards sa close corporation, pwede the stockholders can directly manage the corporation itself. No? Now, in a partnership, in case of mismanagement, the partner himself can sue the other partner. While in a corporation, if there is mismanagement, a stockholder can sue a director but only through what we call a derivative suit, no? which is a suit that is filed in behalf of the corporation as the real party in interest. And the corporation is the one that is the aggrieved party. Sa partnership, kahit personal, on the part of the partner filing the suit, pwede. Okay, so those are the differences between na ah, meron ko pala. Nationality will be the same actually, no? Dito medyo pareho kasi a partnership will be a national of the country where it was created. So if it is created under the laws of the Philippines, no, then it will be considered a Filipino or domestic partnership. While in a corporation ganun din ang ating magiging rule because we normally apply only the incorporation test in determining whether it is a domestic or uh foreign corporation. But unlike in a corporation sa partnership, you know, consider din natin yung percentage of ownership in determining whether it is a Filipino partnership. No? Now, legal personality, as we have already mentioned, begins in a partnership from the time the contract is perfected, which is by mere consent only. While in a corporation, uh, the, the, the separate juridical personality of the corporation begins from the issuance of the certificate of registration as a general rule. Okay? Now, in a partnership, there is no right of succession. In fact, the death, retirement, insolvency, civil interdiction, or insanity, or any changes in the relationship of the partners no, dissolves the partnership. Whereas in a corporation, 
uh, ito yung tinatawag nilang strong juridical personality because there is a right of succession. No? Those cases, the death, retirement, insolvency, civil interdiction of any stockholder does not affect the corporation's existence. In fact, kahit mamatay lahat ng stockholders ng sabay-sabay, meron pa rin uh, nag-e-exist na corporation or hindi maapektuhan rather ang existence ng corporation. Alright? Now, a, a partnership similar to a corporation has a separate juridical personality. And under the civil code, the consequences no, of this particular uh, separate juridical personality of the partnership in general allows the partnership to acquire and possess property of all kinds in its own name no, na hindi magiging property ng, ng mga partners. Okay? It can incur obligation in its own name okay? and as a consequence of that, no, Technically, hindi mo pwedeng kasuhan ng partners ng diretso unless all the partnership assets have already been exhausted. Okay? And they can sue, no? bring either civil or criminal action in its own name na hindi kailangan involve ang mga partners. And lastly, pwede siyang maging insolvent kahit pa solvent pa ang mga individual partners but not the other way around. No? Kasi if the partners become insolvent that will be a ground to dissolve the partnership by operation of law okay so this will be the consequences of a separate juridical personality of the partnership yeah the, there are specific rules provided under the law as to whether there exists or not a partnership no now in this particular cases walang partnership unang una between persons who are not partners as to each other are not per partners to third persons as well. Ang idea dito is that kung hindi kayo, hindi pwedeng i-assume ng mga tao na kayo. No? Except with regards sa partnership by estopel. Kung, pa kung, kung paano naman kayo umasta ay parang kayo, no? eh di pwede nang i-assume ng mga tao. Because the idea of estopel is that you are already estopped or you cannot go back from your misrepresentation because somebody else already relied on such misrepresentation. Okay? Now, the co-ownership or co-possession of itself, whether such co-owners or co-possessors do not or do or do not share any profits made by the use of the property does not in itself establish a partnership. No? So, ito, pati yung susunod, the sharing of gross returns in itself okay, does not establish a partnership. As a consequence of this provision of the law, if you remember, no, for taxation purposes, kung kunwari may dalawang tao na nagmana ng property at yung property na minana nila ay pinapaupahan at kumuha ng rentals no, at pinagahatian nila ang rentals, the, the, the co-ownership in its, on its own is not a separate taxable entity kasi walang magiging partnership na mag exist just because they share in the returns or they are co-owners of a particular property. No? Unless, of course, they actively seek profits. No? In the sense na kung pinabakuran, nagpatayo ng additional units doon sa lupa, then magiging partnership na siya. Okay? But the sharing of the rentals or the gross return on its own does not establish a partnership. Ngayon. <clears throat> Lastly, however, dito merong presumption. Dito, the sharing of the people is profits. Okay? They derive or they share in the profits of a business. Kaya there exists a prima facie presumption that the one receiving the profits is a partner in the business. No? As compared doon sa kanina, what they share are gross returns. No? Gross returns. Dito, what the, what the person receives is a share in the profits of the business. Kaya magkakaroon ng presumption na siya ay partner. Nevertheless, no, yung presumption na yan will not apply if what you receive out of the profits is uh, par, for payment of debt by installment or otherwise. Kahit pa ang installment ay nakabase sa profit ng partnership no, or a certain percentage of such profits. Or wages of an employee Okay? So, yan yung mga tinatawag nating profit sharing. Okay? In, uh, at least in SGD, we call it discretionary bonus. No? Even in Reyes Takadong. Okay? So, kahit nakaka-receive ang employee ng profit share no? or performance bonus for that matter, which is supposedly dependent on the profits as well, then it does not make the employee a partner. Okay? Ganon din yung rent. Kahit pa ang rent na binabayaran ni business ay based on the profits. So kung kunwari, sa 
rental merong fixed rate as a certain percentage of the profit of the business, it doesn't matter. No? The landlord does not become a partner just because he receives rental based on profits. Okay? The same will be uh, true with regards to the annuity received by a widow of a partner, okay, of a deceased partner. The same with interest on loan. Okay? Even though the amount of the interest is again dependent on the profits of the business. So in all four cases here, uh, five cases pala, pati yung sale of goodwill. No? So in all five cases here, the presumption uh, that the partner or the person receiving the profits is a partner does not apply. Okay? Or otherwise stated, walang presumption that the partner or the person receiving the profit is a partner in the business. All right? Now, as to formal requirements, ang sabi natin as a general rule, the partnership is perfected by mere consent. Kasi nga sa definition pa lang, pag sinabi na the parties bind themselves, no, there is already a perfected contract of partnership. It translates now that generally there is no formal requirements. No? As a general rule, a partnership may be constituted in any form except Whenever immovable property is contributed, then tatlo ang magiging formal requirements. An inventory no, of the contributions, signature of the parties in that inventory, and the inventory must be attached to a public instrument. And take note that this is a requirement for validity in the sense that kung hindi ito makomply, void ang contract of partnership. Okay? Ngayon, meron pang isang provision that if the capital of the uh, partnership is more than 3,000, there is a requirement supposedly that the partnership must be in a public instrument and at the same time registered with the SEC. No? But take note that this requirement does not in any way affect the validity of the partnership because it is a requirement intended only to affect third persons. Or otherwise stated, if the capital is more than 3,000 but there is no public instrument or no registration with the SEC, there is still a valid contract of partnership. Now, it's just that it does not affect third persons. All right? Now, let's go now to kinds of partnerships. So the kinds of partnerships, unang-una as to object, it can be classified either as a universal partnership which will be further classified into two, or a particular partnership. Tatlo lang yung particular partnership. No? So dito muna tayo kay universal partnership. Okay? So a universal partnership can either be a universal partnership of all profits or a universal partnership of all present property. If it is a universal partnership of all profits, ang kamukha nito really ay conjugal partnership of gains no? sa mga mag-asawa. Kasi dito, what the partners contribute is only the use, okay? Or the use, use of rock of the properties. But the title or the naked ownership of the properties remain as exclusive properties of the partners. No? Katulad nga ng CPG, kasi sa CPG, okay, nag, uh, kahit ikasal na kayo, exclusive pa rin ang mga properties na mag-asawa, no? But whatever income is earned from those properties will become common property. So in all present property naman, ito kamukha niya is absolute community of property. Kasi dito, hindi lang ang use of rock ang tinatransfer ng mga partners, no? but even the naked ownership. In short, lahat ng existing properties, kaya literal talaga yung all present property. No? So when the partnership is formed, whatever are the properties that are owned by the partners will become uh, properties of the partnership. Okay? Kaya kamukha ng ACP. Diba? Now, in all profits, uh, lahat, literal naman ito, lahat ng kikitain no, ng mga partners, uh, either by industry or by work, or even those no, uh, for contributed use of rock will become partnership property no in all present property it follows no that the profits from the contributed par property will become partnership property as well kasi ang ownership na ng uh, property ay na kay partnership lahat ng kikitain noon kay partnership din no now, however profits from other sources can also be partnership property only if there is a stipulation to that effect pero hindi covered niyan yung uh, properties that are acquired gratuitously, no? whether by inheritance, legacy, or donation, exclusive property and ng mga partners. Pero the fruits coming from such gratuitously acquired properties can nevertheless become no? 
uh, common or partnership property if there is a stipulation only that the fruits from those gratuitously acquired properties will be partnership property. Or stated otherwise, if there is no such stipulation, even the fruits of the gratuitously acquired property will also be uh, or will remain exclusive property of the partners. All right? Now, take note, uh, in case there is an ambiguity, so gumawa kayo ng articles of partnership, ang nakalagay lang, articles of universal partnership. Pero hindi ni specify if it is universal partnership of all profits or universal partnership of all present property. Okay? In that case, no, the law... Uh, the law already puts the rule that in case of ambiguity, the partnership will be deemed a universal partnership of all profits only, no? hindi all property. All right? Now, there are specific persons, however, that are not allowed to form a universal partnership. Okay? Those who are prohibited from making a donation to each other are also not allowed to form a universal partnership. So that will include the husband and the wife. Okay, under Article 133 of the Family Code, those who are guilty of adultery and concubinage, adultery is a crime committed by the wife. No, pag nangaliwa siya, ang concubinage naman is a crime committed by the husband kung siya ay merong concubine, okay? which is technically different. Okay? So, 739 of the Civil Code. Sasama din dyan, those persons who are guilty of the same criminal offenses, adultery and concubinage, if the partnership was entered in consideration of the adultery or concubinage. Ngayon, bakit sila bawal mag-form ng universal partnership? Because a universal partnership is essentially a donation. No? Kaya if they are prohibited from donating to each other, then they cannot do indirectly what the law prohibits directly. Kasi kung papayagan mo silang mag-form ng universal partnership, di muka din silang nag-donate sa isa't isa. No? Kaya pinagbabawalan din silang to form a universal partnership. Alright? Ngayon, meron naman yung tinatawag nating particular partnerships. Ibig sabihin, hindi lahat ng property ng mga partners ay involved. No? And tatlo ito. Una, the object is either determinate things or only their use or the fruits, okay? Or it can be for a specific undertaking or for the exercise of a profession or occupation. So all these are considered only as particular partnerships. So one question that was asked before in the bar exam was, may a husband and wife form or be partners in a general professional partnership? Of course, the answer is yes. Since a general professional partnership is has an object or the object of which is only to exercise a profession, then it is a particular partnership. No? And ang bawal lang naman sa husband and wife is to form a universal partnership. Doon lang sila prohibited. Okay? Kaya pwede. Although, parang hindi pa ako nakita ng auditing firm na may mag-asawa na partners. No? Anyway, so that uh, will be with regards universal and particular partnerships. No? Or the kinds of partnership as to object. Okay, now, there are also different kinds of partnership as to liability. So it can either be a general partnership where all the partners are general partners. No? And the liability of all the partners extends to their personal assets after the assets of the um, partners have already been exhausted or otherwise known as unlimited liability. Okay? As compared to a limited partnership no, where there is at least one general partner and there is at least one limited partner where the limited partner's liability is limited only to his capital contribution. Okay. Now, we also classify a partnership as to the term no, of the partnership. So it can be for a specific term or a fixed term or a particular undertaking. As the name suggests, no, pagdating ng fixed term na yan or pag natapos na yung particular undertaking, then the partnership will be dissolve okay pero allowed naman ang mga partners na i-continue pa rin ang partnership even after the expiration of the term or the fulfillment of the undertaking in which case no they will be governed by the rules concerning partnership at will or iti-treat na yung partnership as a partnership 
at will. So ano ngayon ang partnership at will? When there is no fixed term or a particular undertaking, meaning that the partnership exists solely based on the will of the partners. No? Pag ayaw na nila, they can validly dissolve the partnership and not be liable for damages. Compared to a fixed term or particular undertaking, pwede bang i-dissolve ng partner? Pwede. Okay? Kasi nga, uh, directus personae or personal choices. No? That's why if one partner wants to uh, resign no? or uh, be disassociated with the partnership, even if the fixed term has not yet arrived or the particular undertaking has been fulfilled, allowed naman. Yun nga lang, since it will violate the terms of the partnership, he may be liable for damages. No? We go back to that concept when we talk about the case of Ortega versus Court of Appeals later. Okay? Now, <clears throat> so let's now go to the kinds of partners. So partners can be classified first according to their contribution. So a partner can be classified either as a capitalist partner if he contributes capital, money, or property. Okay? Or an industrial partner where he furnishes or contributes in industry or labor. Or a capitalist industrial partner kung pareho ang kanyang kinocontribute. This particular classification will be important no, later on when we get to the prohibition uh, to engage in another business. And the rules concerning... Uh, uh, to additional contributions no, that are required in case of imminent losses to the partnership. Okay? Now, partners can also be classified as to liability. So, as we have already mentioned kanina, they can be general partners who have unlimited liability or can be liable even up to their personal assets and a limited partner who is liable only up to his capital contribution. Okay? Now, although meron din namang concept din ng general limited partner, but we will get to that later when we talk about limited partnership okay now other kinds of partners that you might encounter a silent partner is one who is an actual partner but does not participate in the management of the partnership meron namang secret partner one who is not known to third persons as a partner kaya literally secret siya no now if the partner is both no at the same uh uh, same time na hindi nagpa-participate sa management and hindi rin siya kilala ng mga tao sa partner, we call him a dormant partner. Okay? And the exact opposite of a dormant partner is what we call as an ostensible partner. No? So an ostensible partner is one who participates in the management and at the same time known to third persons as a partner. Okay? Other kinds of partners that you may, be, may encounter will be a managing partner because we have specific rules with regards to management that we will take talk about later. No? Uh, uh, we also have a liquidating partner, one who is authorized to undertake the liquidation or winding up of the partnership. Okay? And an incoming partner, one who is admitted to the partnership after it has already been constituted. So mamaya, meron kasing specific rules tayo with regards managing, liquidating, and incoming partner. Kaya dinigay na natin siya as part ng other kinds of partners. So those will be the kinds of partners. Punta naman tayo ngayon sa obligations of a partner. So what I did here is to divide the obligations of the partner into two. No? So the first part here will be the obligations of a partner to the partnership and the other partners. And the next part later will be obligations of a partner to third parties. Okay? So dito muna tayo sa kanyang obligation sa partnership and the other partners. Okay? So first will be to give his contribution. Kasi yan mismo yung nasa definition no? that they contribute money, property, or industry. But with regards to this particular obligation, unang-unang question dyan, magkano? No? So the amount that will be given will be dependent on stipulation. Okay? If there is stipulation na money ang ibibigay ng isa, equipment ang ibibigay ng isa, okay lang yan. But the law provides no, that if there is no stipulation as to the amount of the contribution, it will be equal shares okay, to the capital of the partnership. Bakit ito importante? Say when we get later on to uh, the rules with regards to distribution of profits and losses, no, magiging default yung contribution kung walang stipulation as to profits or as to losses. Okay? But, but kung pro ang problem na na-encounter mo sa exam ay silent din no, as to how much is the contribution of the parties, then you can presume that their contributions are equal because the law provides for that. Okay? Ngayon, aside from that, 
kailan. No? So as a rule, the contribution must be provided upon perfection of the contract unless, of course, there is a stipulation otherwise or kung magbigay ng hiwalay na due date no? para kung kailan magdi-distribute or magko-contribute rather ang partners. But if there's no stipulation, then upon perfection of the contract, dapat magbigay na ng contribution. That's why it follows, no, with regards to their liability for delay, the partner will become liable for delay and will be liable as a debtor for interest and damages once he does not contribute at the time he is supposed to. No? And take note that this is one of the exceptions in the concept of delay because the law already provides for the liability in case of delay even if there has been no demand. Okay? So, hindi kailangan ng demand to consider the partner in delay. All right? Now, uh, regards the contribution, so the partner will also be uh, will have similar liabilities to that of a vendor. No? Bag, ang tingin sa kanya dito ng batas, yung kinontribute niya, vendor siya nun. I suppose particularly for property no? na kinocontribute. So, as a consequence of that, okay, he will be bound to deliver the fruits at the time the obligation to deliver the thing no? already exists, even without need of demand. Okay? And at the same time, he must exercise due diligence in preserving the thing or diligence of a good father of a family. Okay? Otherwise, he will be liable for loss and deterioration. And lastly, similar to a vendor, he will be liable to warrant the thing against eviction. Or otherwise stated, mag-a-apply ang ating warranties against eviction para kay partner. No? In case that the partnership is deprived in whole or in part of the possession or ownership of the thing that was contributed by final judgment okay, you know, with regards to the law on sales. No? So that will be with regards to the obligation of a partner to give his contribution. The second, obligation of a partner to the partnership, uh, pa pala, the concept ng risk of loss with regards to the contribution. No? The, the question here will be, who bears the risk of loss? No? Ang premise dito, of course, is na-deliver na. Okay? Na-deliver na yung contribution niya to the partnership. So, the partner will be the one to bear the risk of loss if that what was contributed is uh, a specific and determinate thing that is not fun. Hi. Sorry, ganyan talaga pag tayo ay live sa so nakaka-technical difficulties. Mulan kasi dito. I am very sorry. So going back, malas kasi yung isang kaklase ko sa law school. Nanonood siya ngayon. Shout out dyan. <laughs> Dahil nanonood siya ngayon, na-disconnect tuloy ako. So talaga malas. Anyway, so going back, dito naman ako naputol. No? Nagulat ako bigyan na lang nawala yung sharing sa taas eh. So, the risk of loss in relation to what has been contributed by the partner to the partnership will be borne by the partner. Again, if what was contributed is a specific or determinate thing and what is contributed is only the use of rock for the, and the fruits for the common benefit of the partnership. The premise here, and hindi naman ito mahirap tandaan, no, is that uh, the partner remained to be the owner of what was contributed. Okay? Kaya when, if it suffers a loss, let's say by fortuitous event, then the partner is the one who shall bear the risk of loss with regards to that. Okay? And of course, if there is a stipulation that the partner will bear the risk of loss no? and there was an appraisal in inventory. So dahil sa stipulation, clear naman no? that the partner will be the one to bear the risk of loss. Okay? Ngayon. Uh, the loss will be borne by the partnership if what was contributed is a fungible thing. Uh, as used here, we refer to fungible here no, as interchangeable okay? or uh, nagagamit. Kaya nga sama din dyan, you cannot be kept without deteriorating okay? such as machinery no? Na, that may suffer depreciation. So the loss concerning the depreciation will be borne by the partnership or if they were contributed to be sold. Of course, the partnership will bear the risk of loss kasi sana ang may ownership with regards to what was contributed. And the partnership will also be the one to bear the risk of loss if there is appraisal pero walang stipulation that the partner will bear the risk of loss. So the partnership will be the one to bear such 
risk of loss. So yan ang ating uh, first obligation of a partner to the partnership and to other partners, so which is to give his contribution. The second obligation of a partner will be to give additional contribution in case of imminent losses. No? The premise here is that the partnership wants to continue operating as a going concern. No? To differentiate with regards to the obligations of partners to answer for the debts of the uh, partnership in case of exhaustion of the partnership assets. Kasi doon, ang premise noon magsasara na ang partnership. Dito, gusto pang ituloy no, ng partnership or ng partners ang uh, pag-operate ng partnership. No? That's why, in case of imminent losses of the business of the partnership, the partners as a rule is required to give additional contributions. Pero sino ba talaga ang required lamang? The capitalist partners. But they can be exempted by stipulation no? to provide additional contributions in case of imminent losses. And industrial partners kung may stipulation. So take note of the difference. Ha? A capitalist partner is generally required except if there is stipulation. An industrial partner is generally not required okay? except there is a stipulation requiring him. Okay? So yan ang isang difference ng capitalist at industrial partner. Again, uh, the premise here is that they want to continue the business of the partnership. That's why they are requiring additional contributions. Ano ngayon ang mangyayari if the partner is required to give additional contributions but he fails to do so? In that case, he will be required or obliged to sell his interest to the other partners. But the word interest as used here, no, and we will discuss when we get to the rights of a partner, pertains to his share in the profits and surpluses. Not necessarily naman his capital, okay? interest to the other partners. So, hindi rin ibig sabihin that he will be, uh, we call this, expelled okay, from the partnership in the sense that it will result in dissolution. No? Yun lang ang kanyang required na ibeta, yung share niya in the profits and surplus. All right? Now, the third obligation of a partner to the partnership and to the other partners would be not to engage in another business. Again, it matters here that we differentiate no, between uh, a capitalist and an industrial partner. Kasi pagdating kay industrial partner, ang pagbabawal sa kanya ay lahat ng klase ng negosyo. Okay? All kinds of businesses ang bawal. Logical lang ang rule na ito because ang industrial partner, ang kinontribute niya na lang ay oras niya. Diba? Labor or industry. Kaya pinagbabawalan siya ng batas na hatiin pa yung oras na yun na nga lang ang kinokontribute niya. No? Except of course, if the capitalist partners would permit him to engage in another business for himself. Okay? Ngayon, ano ang mangyayari kung hindi niya uh, susundin ang prohibition na ito? Then the capitalist partners can either exclude him for a fir or from the firm. So this will be a ground for expulsion of the industrial partner or they can avail uh, themselves of the benefits which the industrial partner obtained no, in violation of this provision. Yung second kasi dyan, ang premise is that kung yung oras sana ni industrial partner ay ginugol niya para sa pagpapatakbo ng uh, partnership, then yung partnership sana ang kumita. No? Kaya ano, one option given to the capitalist partners would be to avail of the benefits derived by the industrial partner from the other business that he spent time for. No? Ngayon, with regards to capitalist partner, on the other hand, no, ang kanyang prohibition ay limited lamang sa similar industry. Okay? Ibig sabihin, if the partnership's uh, business is different from what the capitalist partner wants to engage in, he will be allowed, no? even without the consent of the other partners. As compared to an industrial partner where the prohibition applies to all types of business, a capitalist partner's prohibition is limited to businesses of the same industry only no? as that of the partnership. But this is subject still to exceptions. Okay? So, kailan pwedeng mag-engage the capitalist partner even in businesses of the same industry? when it is expressly stipulated that he is allowed. In short, there is a stipulation in the contract of partnership. Or when the other partners allow him okay, to engage in a business of a similar industry, whether express or implied, or during the period of liquidation and winding up. The idea here is that the partnership has already been dissolved, kaya mawawala na yung prohibition for the capitalist partner to engage in a business of a similar industry. And lastly, when the general capitalist partner becomes a limited partner in a competitive enterprise. Kasi um, 
ang idea dyan is that hindi naman siya pwedeng mag-manage no? no other business kasi limited partner lang or that he is prohibited from uh, managing or being engaged or active uh, actively participate in the management of such limited partnership. Okay? Now, what will be the consequences if the capitalist partner does not comply with the prohibition? So he can he will be, he can be required to bring to the partnership all the profits that he legally obtained, no, in violation of this prohibition or and however, any losses that he will sustain, he shall personally bear, no? Hindi maaapektuhan ang partnership. Now, even if the law does not ex explicitly provide for it, no, the authors are uh, consistent that the partner can also be ousted. Okay? Ang magiging ground mo nga lang dito ay loss of trust and confidence. Kasi nga, you violated the prohibition to engage in a business of a similar industry. Ang premise pa niyan, baka yung mga good practices ng partnership dinala mo no? doon sa magiging competitor partnership or competitor business. So that is the third obligation of a partner to the partnership and to the other partners. Okay? Ang pang-apat will pertain only to a managing partner. No? The situation here is that there is a common debtor na may utang siya kay managing partner at may utang din siya at the same time to the partnership. Okay? So ang premise ng rules, and itong very common topic no? that is actually being asked in the board exam kasi may computation. Pwede ka kasi pa-compute dito. Okay? So the premise here is that the managing partner will be the one collecting even in behalf of the partnership. No? Kaya ang magiging tendency dito is that the managing partner might prioritize the debt no, that is owed to him rather than uh, allow the partnership to recover also with regards to the partnership credit. Kaya nag-set ng rules ang bata. So let's say uh, D, uh, makita ito kagad, makita illustration kagad. Ah, nawala ang slide ko with regards to that. Anyway, so the rules here that we have to follow is that number one, no, it will be dependent on the choice first of the debtor. Okay, primary ang choice ng debtor. Kasi ang ina-apply natin na rules dito is that of application of payments. No, in the modes of extinguishment, sa payment, pero kung special form of payment na tawag ay application of payments. Pag maraming obligations ang isang debtor at yung ibabayad ay hindi sapat to cover uh, all the obligations, so pwede siyang mamili no? kung saan niya i-apply yung utang. Okay? But dependent on uh, some, uh, what do you call this, limitations okay? on his right of choice. Okay? Ngayon, if the debtor does not exercise his right of choice, then under the obligations, under loan obligations, okay, the creditor can choose no, to which obligation it will apply and indicate the same in the receipt. Kaya kung walang choice ang debtor, which is the usual case that we will encounter with regards problem type questions no, on this particular concept, depending ngayon anong resibo ang i-issue ni managing partner. Okay? Kung ang in ni managing partner na resibo ay resibo ng partnership, lahat ng binayad ng debtor will apply entirely to the partnership credit. Okay? Walang portion ng, ng payment that will go to the managing partner. But if the managing partner issues a receipt in his name, Okay? or yung mismong resibo niya and not that of the partnership, then the payment will be uh, credited to both the obligations pro rata, okay? depending on the uh, outstanding balance. No? Again, ang rule kasi dito is that, uh, <clears throat> the premise is that uh, the managing partner might prioritize his credit. Kaya pag siya ang nag-issue ng resibo in his name, no? kaya ina sinasabi ng batas, i-apply natin to both the obligations. Okay? Now, if the debtor exercises the right of choice, particularly because if uh, the debt to the managing partner is more onerous to him, he will be allowed to do so. Okay? Kaya hindi natin niya apply yung rules as to the receipt. Okay? If the debt to the managing partner is more onerous to the debtor and the debtor chooses okay, to apply the payment to the managing partner's credit. Okay? So to visualize that, let's give an example here. So D owed ABC partnership and A. So, dalawang pinag-uutangan niya, yung partnership at si A na, si manage, na isang managing partner. Okay? Uh, 7,000 and 3,000 respectively. So, A was able to collect 5,000 from D. No? So, in this particular case, if A issued the receipt in the name of the partnership, the entire 5,000 will be credited to the partnership credit. So, in such a way na 2,000 na lang ang magiging utang ni D 
high partnership. But if A is the receipt in his name, then the 5,000 will be applied pro rata. No? In such a way that 3,500 will go to the partnership credit, which is 7 over 10,000 okay, of the 5,000 pay, peso payment. No? Now, and uh, 1,500 will go to A's credit, which is the 30% okay, of the total obligations. But ito lang ang ating sinusunod na rule kasi wala, it doesn't say in the problem that D exercise the right of choice. No? Kaya pumunta kagad tayo doon sa uh, resibo no? or sa rule natin concerning the receipt. That's why, uh, as an exception, if the debt to the managing partner is more onerous to the debtor, and the debtor chooses to apply the payment to such debt, then hindi mag apply yung first four na pinag-usapan natin. No? Yung 5,000, yung 3,000 yan ipambabayad doon kay managing partner's credit. Kasi more onerous to the debtor and he exercised the right of choice. All right? Now, so other obligations of a partner to the partnership and to the other partners will include not to convert partnership funds or property for his own use. Okay? He is also liable to account uh, any secret profits na tinatawag. No? Ang idea dito is that he used uh, partnership, uh, what do you call this? Partnership utilities, assets, no? to, to earn secrets, uh, to, to earn profits na hindi alam ng ibang partner, then he will be liable to account for them. No? Uh, and pay for damages caused by his fault. Itong particular provision na ito, may dalawang rules pa na kailangan tandaan. But we will discuss that later. Okay. Now, share with other partners the share of the partnership credit which he has received from an insolvent debtor. Ito ang kakaiba lang na rule. No? Kasi ang premise dito ng rule, ang, ng obligation na ito ng partner, if you read the provision, which is Article 1743, dalawang bagay ang nangyari. No? Nakakolekta si partners, partner no? na utang kay partnership. Okay. And eventually, ang kinolekta lang niya rather, ang kinolekta lang niya ay yung portion pertaining to him. Okay. Which is premised on the idea na pinaghati-hatian na ng mga partners yung partnership credit na kanya-kanya na sila nang pagkolekta. No? In such a way that second, if the debtor becomes insolvent, then he will be required to share whatever he received as payment with the other partners. No? Yan ang premise niya. So, kaya kakaiba lang yung idea na kanya-kanya na sila ng pagkolekta ng partnership credit for a com from a common debtor. Okay? So, also the obligation to keep the partnership books in the principal office okay, and allow other partners to have access to the same except if there is a stipulation which provides for a different location where the partnership books will be kept. Okay? Now, so other obligations still reimburse the partnership of damages suffered by his fault. So, ito na yung pinag-usapan natin kanina. Take note here that the liability for the damages cannot be reduced no, or compensated with profits and benefits earned by the partnership because of his efforts. No? Kung trabaho niya naman talaga i-manage ang affairs ng business at kumita ito, then hindi yan pwedeng gamitin pambawas sa kanyang liability for damages. But as an exception provided by law, if the, uh, the partnership earned unusual profits no, because of extraordinary efforts coming from the partners, then pwede nang pababain yung kanyang liability for damages but only by a court. No, hindi automatic ang pag-reduce ng kanyang liability for damages. All right? And to inform the, par the other partners on all matters that affects the partnership or relative to the partnership affairs, to observe diligence of a good father of a family in all his dealings or ordinary diligence, and to adhere to the partnership agreement and decisions of appointed managing partner, particularly because the managing partner or managing partners will have... Uh, authority no, to exercise all acts of administration, being appointed as one. Okay, So those will be the obligations of a partner to the partnership and to the other partners. So the next group of obligations of a partner will be their obligations to third persons. Okay, So as to third persons, the first liability of a partner will be regarding the firm name. Okay, So as to the firm name, pwede namang nakasama ang pangalan ng mga partners, pwede rin hindi. No? In fact, I don't know bakit sa SGV, they, uh, patay na yung tatlong pangalan, yung three named partners, but they still maintain the name. But uh, imagine, I think there are more than a hundred partners in, an auditing, in that auditing firm. So kung lahat sila ay nakapangalan, sobrang haba ng pangalan. Kaya hindi naman required na lahat ng partners 
uh, nakalagay no sa pangalan ng firm name or partnership name okay now with regards a partner by estopel no the idea here is that a stranger uh, who is not a stranger in the sense that he is not a partner to the partnership pero nakalagay ang pangalan niya sa firm name then he will be liable as a partner kasi if others will be misled no kasi nga nakapangalan siya sa partnership so magiging presumption ng mga tao ay baka partner siya okay and if they are misled because of that then he will be liable as a partner and he cannot go back from that misrepresentation already okay and with regards a limited partner kasi sabi natin one of the limitations on the limited partner is not to include his name in the firm name otherwise he will be liable as a general partner as a general rule we'll talk about the two exceptions when we get to limited partnership okay now ito na yung sabi natin kanina na liability after exhaustion of part partnership assets. The premise here is that the partnership will be closed no? or matapos na ang kanilang operations or they will cease operating as a partnership or as a going concern already. Compared to our earlier discussion with regards uh, additional contributions in case of imminent losses. Kasi yun, tuloy pa ang partnership dito, tapos na. No? So dito, the rule is that the partners will be liable even the industrial partners pro rata. Ibig sabihin, they can have their own uh, stipulation as to this particular liability, but otherwise it can it can be based on their capital contributions. But take note that their liability to the third parties or the creditors will be after the partnership assets have already been exhausted. Okay. But however, any partner may enter into a separate obligation to perform a partnership contract. Kung meron naman magbo-volunteer, sabi niya, I volunteer as tribute, pwedeng siya na lang ang magbayad entirely kung gusto niya. No? Now, another aspect of this particular rule no, is that any stipulation to the liability of the partner after exhaustion of partnership assets is void in the sense that the creditor can still collect from the partner kahit pa merong exemption. No? But, Take note that uh, the, the stipulation of exempting the partner may still be valid but only between the partners. In the sense that the creditor can collect from the supposedly exempt partner pero he can ask for reimbursement from the other partners. Yan ang nagiging consequence. In fact, I think there was one question no, concerning this one uh, as relayed to me by one of um, our reviewers before. No? May isang tanong regarding this one in the previous board exam uh, that happened. Okay, so let's take an illustration so that we can visualize. Now, ABC and D are partners of ABCD partnership agreed on equal distribution of parties or profits rather. No? So as regards third parties, however, they exempted C, an industrial partner. So the total assets of the partnership amounted to 200,000 while the remaining liabilities uh, to the third party, okay, which is X, amounts to 800,000. So kulang na okay, ang assets to cover for the obligation of 800,000 to X. So in this case, ang liabilities na, uh, na 800,000 will be settled first with the remaining partnership assets. So yung 200,000 na assets ipambabayad doon kay X. No? Kaya ang paghahati-hati na lang ng mga partner will be 600,000. And since the... Uh, the, the partners agreed on equal distribution of profits and walang agreement as to losses, we will apply the same uh, distribution as to this liability. No? Yan ang magiging kanilang pro rata share equal. No? So, take note, hindi laging equal. It is pro rata. No? It's just that in this particular example, yung pro rata nila is equal din. Okay? So, but since nothing in the problem would indicate a different sharing agreement, yun nga, no, capital contributions, then equal din tayo. So, each may be liable to the creditor for 150000 Sir, kahit po si C na in-exempt, yes. Because the agreement of the parties to exempt C is void no, with regards third parties. Kaya X can also collect 150000 even from C. No? Yeah. C may also be made liable by the creditor because again, the stipulation exempting C is considered as void. Nevertheless, kung magbabayad si C ng 150000 he can seek reimbursement from the other partners kasi as to the partners, valid ang kanyang exempting stipulation. Okay? Kaya doon lang magiging uh, void yung stipulation as to the third party. So I hope this is clear no? kasi ito very common topic that is being the subject of questions in the board exam. Uh, almost always, but partnership may ganyan. Alright? Now, authority to act for and in behalf of the partnership, sabi natin kanina, generally, 
uh, each partner is regarded as an agent of the partnership and can bind the partnership no, with their personal acts. But the authority of the partner can be classified as uh, express, no? lalo na kung meron in writing talaga, lalo na kung kunwari ang tawag mo sa kanya ay head ng procurement, then he can enter into contracts of sale no? para to purchase raw materials, let's say. Kasi nga, yun ang mismong title niya. So, expressly granted. Then, kasama rin dyan will be uh, implied or those which can come from the express authority kahit hindi na sinabi. So, kung kunwari, head ng procurement ang isang partner, he can enter into contracts of sale and at the same time, impliedly, he can choose no, kung sino ang magiging supplier. Okay? Kasi nga, implied from the express powers. Pero, meron din tayong tinatawag na apparent authority. If the act of the partner is in the usual course of business of the partnership, okay, magiging binding din sa partnership yung act na yan if the person to whom he is dealing with has no knowledge uh, of the fact that the partner actually has no authority. You know? So kung kunwari, may isang partnership na gumagawa ng mga wooden chairs, yan ang kanilang negosyo, no? tapos may isang partner ng partnership na kahit hindi naman siya related in any way sa operations, siya ang kumuha ng, or he entered in a contract of sale or purchase, for that matter, no? of raw materials from a particular supplier. Okay? The contract may still be binding to the partnership if the supplier does not know that the partner acts without authority. Okay? Now, take note, however, if the partner is not carrying on the usual business of the partnership, then it is not binding to the partners. No? So, dalawa ang kailangan in the usual course of business and the person he's dealing with has no knowledge or in good faith. No, That would have been another term for that. Okay? Now, take note, however, that the apparent authority does not extend to the following. Kasi in all apps here, the consent of all the partners will be necessary. No? So, in all these cases, uh, kailangan ng consent ng all partners to assign property and trust for creditors or uh, on an assignee's promise to pay the debts to the partnership. Dispose of the goodwill of the business or any other act which should make it impossible to carry on the business of the partnership or matatapos na, no? or that they will cease operating already. To confess a judgment in behalf of the partnership, no? hindi pwedeng isang partner lang ang gagawa niyan. Okay? Or to enter into a compromise agreement concerning the partnership's claim or receivable or liability or payable. Or to submit a partnership claim or liability to arbitration or renounce a claim of the partnership. So in all seven cases, as a general rule, the consent of all the partners will be necessary to make this or any of these acts valid. Okay? Kaya hindi yan covered ng apparent authority. Of course, as an exception, no, if the other partners uh, were authorized, Okay, so kung may express authority lamang or unless the others who did not give their consent have already abandoned the business. So the remaining partners na lang ang magde-decide concerning these seven acts. All right? Now, with regards as a consequence of the authority to bind, no, papasok naman dyan yung admissions kasi if an admission is made by one partner which is within the scope of his authority, whether it is express, implied, or apparent, will be evidence against the partnership or admission na rin siya ng partnership. Okay? Now, as to notice, if a partner uh, received a notice no, uh, and it is within his authority to receive such notice, notice na rin to the partnership ang magiging treatment. The only exception provided by law is in case of fraud that is committed by such partner. All right? Now, ito, I don't know why this is not emphasized in most textbooks no, regarding the effect of conveyance of property. And this is a very lengthy provision that you will find in the civil code. No? But in this particular discussion, I group them into five transactions kasi medyo magulo pa dahil parang paragraph 1, pareho ng effect with paragraph 3, paragraph 2, pareho ng effect with paragraph 4. So just to make it uh, easier to remember or understand, ginroup na lang natin yung mga transactions with the same effect. No? And the transactions will differ as to sino ang nag-convey no? in the deed of conveyance, kung kaya na yung sale, deed of sale, kanino nakapangalan or sino ang seller doon sa deed na yan. Okay? And uh, ano, rather, sino ang may-ari yan ng property. This is for real property only. Ha? So the title is in the name of kung kanino nakapangalan or sino ang may-ari ng property in the title. 
and kung kanino nakapangalan yung deed of conveyance. So kung nari yan ay sale, yun nga, kung sino ang nilagay na pangalan ng seller. Okay? So if any partner conveyed real property, the title of which is in the name of the partnership, and if the deed is executed in the name of the partnership, no, ganun din na magiging epekto with regards one or more partners conveyed, okay? the title is in the name of one or more partners then, and it is executed in the name of one or more partners as well. No? In, all, in both cases, the title okay, generally passes to the buyer. Okay? But as a general rule as well, the partnership will be allowed to recover. Pero yung right to recover ni partnership will not apply if the transfer or conveyance is in the usual way of business no? and the other party does not have knowledge of the lack of authority. Okay? Kaya innocent buyer or in good faith see buyer. No? Or stated otherwise then, the transfer was done with apparent authority. No? So again, pwedeng i-recover ng partnership except if the transfer was made in uh, by or with apparent authority. Okay? Now, on the other hand, dito sa second group natin, no? yung second row natin, so any partner conveyed the property, the title of which is in the name of the partnership, and the deed of conveyance is in the name of the partner. Ang pinagkaiba dito sa kanina, yung deed of conveyance na kapangalan sa ibang tao as compared to who is in the title. No? In which case, what passes to the buyer is only equitable interest. Okay? Ang requirement pa para lang mapas ang equitable interest na ito is that the conveyance was in the usual way of business. Which means as implied from that provision is that if it, the conveyance was not in the usual way of business, then nothing passes to the buyer. No? Not even equitable interest man lang. Okay? But if the all partners convey the property, the title of which is in the name of all the partners, and the deed of conveyance is in the name of all the partners, then all rights to the property will pass to the buyer without any right of recovery on the part of the partnership. All right? Now, Dito naman, papasok ang tinatawag natin yung solidary liability. Now, when we talk about solidary liability here, this is not only for the partnership, but with all the partners. No? So lahat sila ay solidarily liable. So dito sa torts or quasi-delic, there is a wrongful act or omission committed by a partner either because the partner has authority or uh, it is in the usual or ordinary course of business of the partnership. No? And by, wrong, by that wrongful act or omission that is done with authority, there is loss or injury that is caused to another person. And the person, or the victim, a grief party, is not a partner to the partnership. Okay? In which case, the partnership itself will be liable to the same extent as the partner so acting or committing the act. In fact, all the partners and the partnership are solidarily liable for such loss or injury. Okay, ngayon. The other aspect of solidarity liability will be for misappropriation. And dalawa ang pwedeng mangyari dito. No? Either the partner is the one who received the money and then misappropriated the same or na-receive na ng partnership yung pera and then the, one of the partners misappropriated it while it is in the possession of the partnership. But Either way, kahit si partner nakatanggap or si partnership ang nakatanggap, solidary din ang magiging liability ng partnership and the other partners as to each other. No? So, with regards to torts, kanina, and misappropriation, solidary ang liability ng mga partners and the partnership. Alright? Now, ito naman with regards partner by estopel. So, a partner by estopel is one who misrepresents himself as a person of an existing par a partner of an existing partnership uh, kahit hindi naman siya partner. No? The idea is that he, he just uh, tells everybody that he is a partner but in fact, he is not. Okay? Now, kailan magkakaroon ng partnership liability when the partnership consented? No? An idea dito is that all the partners gave their consent for the misappropriation uh, or misrepresentation rather, in which case the partnership itself will become liable. No? But if not, all the partners gave their consent. The only one who will be liable will be the partners who gave their consent. No? Kaya walang magiging partnership liability. Kasi kung sino lang ang nag-consent dun sa misrepresentation, sila lang ang magiging liable. Alright? Now, one who represents himself as a partner of a non-existent partnership is also a partner by estopel. No? 
and their liability will be pro rata since there is no partnership that has a separate juridical personality or magkakaroon lang ng partnership in the sense that we call it a partnership by estopel okay but there's no actual partnership between the supposed partners by estopel and lastly no as to the obligations of a partner to third parties will be the liability of an incoming partner which as we've mentioned earlier an incoming partner is one who becomes a partner on the partnership after it has already been constituted or additional partner ang tawag sa kanya no so with regards to obligations that he incurred prior to his admission liable pa rin siya dyan, but only up to his contribution except if there is a stipulation to the contrary no but with regards to debts that are incurred after his admission dyan na siya magkakaroon ng unlimited liability or liability up to his personal assets yung iba sinasabi hindi ba unfair na yung mga obligations na hindi pa siya partner liable din siya two things no kasi una uh, once this incoming partner has been admitted no the partnership will be dissolved kasi magkakaroon ng uh, change in the relationship of the partners no that's why he could have asked for liquidation before continuing the business of the partnership but by not so doing then he is uh, liable for the uh, debts that are already existing no uh, pangalawa makikinabang din siya dyan. Kasi ang idea ng obligation na yan that exists even prior to his admission is that it is being used no, already to operate the partnership. So kung sakaling kumita ang partnership, makikinabang siya sa utang na yun. Kaya inaallow din ang batas na maging liable din siya even with debts that are incurred prior to his admission. Alright? So those are the obligations of a partner. Is it okay if, I, if we take like a 5 to 10 minute break lang. I'll just get water. <laughs> I have been discussing the entire day already. I had a class at 7 to 10 in the morning and a webinar kanina ng 2 to 4. So let's just take a 5 to 10 minute break for me to quit to get water and to rest a little. Alright? So yeah, break muna. Okay, so we're back. Sorry. I just had to rest a little. I'm really, really tired. Anyway, sa mga hindi pa po nakapag-enroll, we hope to see you in Rio. No, We are still accepting enrollments. And we have already started printing out the handouts up to, at least for RFBT, I've already provided the handouts up to cooperatives. No? Sinunod po yung pagkakasunod-sunod sa syllabus and sa TOS ng BOA. Kaya... That covers almost uh, 80%, I think, 70 plus percent of the entire coverage of the uh, syllabus. Okay, so sana we can, we can have you in uh, Rio CPA review. All right, so going back, so we are done already with the uh, general principles in the partnership, the kinds of partners and the kinds of partnerships. Then we are also done with the obligations of a partner as to the partnership and the par other partners and the obligation of the partners as to third parties. And dito na tayo ngayon sa rights of a partner. All right? So the rights of a partner will include primarily the right to share in profits no? and losses. As, well, hindi naman yung karapatan, but there is a right to share in profits and this particular concept will be covering the distribution, no? the rules concerning the distribution of the profits. So anong susundin natin in distributing the profits of a partnership? It will be in accordance with agreement or stipulation of the parties as to how the profits will be distributed. Kung walang magiging agreement, then we base it on capital contributions. No? And the industrial partner, according to law, will receive a share which is just and equitable, which is normally provided in the exam. No? Binibigay naman yung percentage that is just and equitable. Kasi ang idea dyan is that the industrial partner does not have any capital contribution. Ngayon, paano kung kunwari, yung problem na na-encounter mo, lahat naman sila capitalist partner, pero walang binigay na amount ng kanilang contribution, sabi nga natin kanina, we can presume it to be equal. No? Kasi as to the amount of the contributions that the partner is required to make, it will be dependent on agreement, pero kung wala rin agreement as to contribution, equal ang nakalagay sa batas. That's why you can presume 
that the contributions are equal if the problem is silent. No? Now, as to losses, however, the first thing that we prioritize in distributing losses will be the agreement as to losses. No? And if there are no agreements as to losses, pero meron as to profits, then the same proportion or gagamitin natin yung uh, percentage ng share ng profits in distributing the losses. Ganon din, kung walang agreement as to profits, uh, profits or losses, then we follow capital contribution. But in this case, the industrial partner is not liable for losses. No? Exempt siya from sharing in the losses. Or, or stated otherwise, the industrial partner may only be liable for losses if there is a stipulation that he is liable for such losses. All right? Now, again, kung walang capital contribution, we can presume it to be equal, no? as, as we have already mentioned a while ago. All right? Now, so the industrial partner may be made liable for losses, again, only if there is a stipulation to that effect. So if the problem is silent, no, then the industrial partner is exempt from sharing in the losses. But take note in this particular part, no, meron tayong tinatawag na pactum leonina. Pactum leonina is a stipulation that excludes one or more partners from sharing in the profits or losses, which is void. No? Pero ang nagiging problema tuloy dito, Paano kung kunwari, the stipulation that exempts a partner exempts an industrial partner? No? As, uh, although technically void pa rin talaga ang stipulation na yan, but ang effect niya ay pareho lang din. No? That the industrial partner is exempt from sharing in the losses. Kasi kung wala namang stipulation, exempt ang industrial partner. Kaya ang nagiging general take tuloy when you uh, encounter a question in the board exam as to the status of the stipulation exempting an industrial partner it may be regarded as valid kasi pareho din ang nagiging legal effect niya all right now another oh sorry let's take an illustration so a b c and d are partners with equal contributions of 25000 each so they agreed to share losses one is to one is to two is to two but no agreement as to profits. In the year 2020, the partnership earned profits amounting to 30,000 pesos. So how much should A receive no, as a share in such profits? Then in that case, ang matatanggap niya ay 7.5. Kasi walang, dis walang agreement as to the distribution of profits. So the profits will be distributed according to the capital contributions, which in this case is equal. That's why they will equally share the profits of 30,000. Yung agreement na pinrovide sa problem is to losses, but we don't use the agreement as to losses in distributing the profits. No? Unlike the other way around, na kung walang agreement as to losses, then we can use no, the agreement as to profits in distributing the losses. Okay? But again, kung losses ang agreement, we don't use the same okay, in distributing profits. Kaya in this case, since walang agreement as to profits, capital contribution will be the basis in distributing the profits. All right? I hope that's clear. Kasi yan lang yung isang, I think, that will be uh, my twist no, pag na-encounter nyo sa exam. Sir, Ano ba? Wala, wala ba dyan yung mga 20% bonus after profits before tax? After pro, uh, after tax or 20% bonus before tax? Walang ganun dito. No? Yung mga ganyang questions ng distribution ng profits and losses will be in AFAR. Okay? Hindi yan ang tanungan pagdating sa RFBT because we are limited to the legal principles only. Kaya hindi ganun kakomplikado ang computation kapag RFBT question on distribution of profits and losses in a partnership. Alright? Now, so uh, the other right of a partner are the property rights of a partner which covers three. No? Tatlo ito. The first one, as we will discuss now, will be the rights to specific partnership property. Yung pangalawa that we will discuss in a while will be his interest in the partnership. And the third one will be the right to uh, participate in the management of the partnership. So, with regards his rights in specific partnership property, the partner is treated as a co-owner. Pero this is a special kind of co-ownership, no? Hindi ito governed ng ordinary rules or the rules in ordinary co-ownership uh, because there are specific consequences, okay, of this co-ownership provided under uh, the law on partnership, no? So, una is that uh, the right to specific partnership property gives each partner the equal right to possess partnership property. So, magkakaroon ng equal right of possession but only for partnership purposes. No? So, hindi niya pwedeng i-exercise yung right to possess if it is not related to 
uh, the business partners or the partnership purpose or for any other purposes without the consent of the other partners. Okay? Now, pangalawa is that unlike the interest of a co-owner in an ordinary co-ownership, the right to, of a partner to specific partnership property is not assignable or cannot be the subject of an assignment. Uh, the only instance that it can be subject to assignment is with regards uh, the rights of all the partners to the property. No? Kailangan sama-sama, hindi pwedeng isa-isa. Unlike kung ikaw ay co-owner, kunwari ng lupa, in fact, pwede mo nang ibenta no? kahit uh, hindi pa divided yung lupa. Okay? You can sell an undivided interest already, but not the specific or the right to specific partnership property. Also, the right to specific partnership property cannot be the subject of attachment or execution. Ibig sabihin, kung itong si partner ay kasuhan at siya ay matalo, hindi pwedeng gamitin pambayad sa kanyang judgment debt ang kanyang right to specific partnership property. The only time that the property may be attached no, or subject of an execution is for a claim against the partnership itself to answer for a partnership debt but not to answer for the liability of an individual partner. Okay? And lastly, it cannot be the subject of legal support. So even legal support exempted it no? in the sense that you cannot use it no? to, to pay for the obligation of a partner for legal support. Kaya ito, kakaibang klase ng co-ownership because of these four consequences of co-ownership no? or rights of specific partnership property. Now, the second uh, property right of a partner is his interest. Dito will have to be technical because when we talk about interest of a partner, we are not talking about his equity no? or his uh, uh, capital contribution. When we talk about interest here as a property right of a partner, we are talking about his share in the profits and surplus, okay? but not the actual contribution of the partner. No? Now, when you have that in mind already as to what is interest in the partnership as a property right of a partner, so pwede na itong uh, i-convey no? or i-transfer to another person. Or stated otherwise, as compared to the right to specific partnership property, his interest may be the subject of an assignment. No? Hindi katulad yung kanina, bawal. Dito, pwede. And if a partner will convey his interest to another person who is not a partner, which again is allowed, no? then it will not in itself dissolve the partnership. Madidissolve ng partnership only if there is a stipulation that the assignment of the interest results in dissolution. Okay? Pangalawa is that the conveyee or the transferee does not necessarily become a partner. Okay? And as such, no, dahil hindi naman siya partner, wala siyang karapatan to demand accounting and settlement. He cannot interfere in the management or administration of the partnership business and the uh, uh, he cannot demand information, accounting, and inspection of the partnership books because all these three rights belong only to a partner. No? So the assignee or the conveyee cannot exercise the rights of a partner kasi hindi naman siya partner. All right? Now, the rights of the conveyee or the assignee will be limited only to get the profits kasi nga yan ang inassign sa kanya. The interest of the partner is limited to his share in the profits and surpluses. No? Kaya kung ano yung profits na makukuha ng assign or partner, pwede niyang kolektahin. And at the same time, he can avail of the usual remedies in case of fraud in the management of the partnership and also to receive the interest of the assigner in the event of the dissolution. But again, only limited to the surplus, no? but not for the capital contribution of a partner. All right? Now, so, pwede rin, unlike yung right to specific partnership property, the property rights of a partner or the interest of a partner may be the subject of attachment or uh, an execution by the court no? or to answer for the personal uh, judgment debt of a partner. Okay? In which case, only the profits and the surplus of the partner and not his share in the specific partnership property uh, ang magiging coverage okay? ng charge or attachment by the court. But, Take note that priority will still be given to creditors of the partnership. Uunahin pa rin silang bayaran bago yung personal creditor ng uh, debtor or ng 
debtor partner, okay? Now, such interest, however, kung ito ay ma-attach no, or ma-benta in a public sale by virtue of execution, pwede yung i-redeem no? prior or after the foreclosure with either the separate property of one or more of the partners or with partnership property, okay? With the consent of all the other partners. When we get to limited partnership later, this is one distinction that you have to note, no? Kasi the limited partner's interest may also be charged or be the subject of an attachment, pero ang redemption ng limited partner's interest is limited to the uh, properties of the general partners. Okay? Hindi pwedeng gamitin ang partnership property to redeem the limited interest or the, the limited partner's interest. All right? And lastly, we have the right to participate in the management. So every partner, as a rule, has the right to participate in the management, but subject to the rules on management, which will be our next topic. No, sa rules on management, which is a separate line item. No, in the uh, syllabus. Kaya very important ang rules of management. Now, the rules of management. What I did here, no, para mas madaling maintindihan at maalala, is I divided the different rules into four. Okay? Four situations. The first situation is when there is only one managing partner. The second situation is when there are two or more managing partners or multiple managing partners. The third situation is when there is no managing partner appointed and there is a stipulation requiring the consent of all the partners for the partnership acts. And the last situation will be walang managing partner, wala rin yung stipulation requiring the consent of all the partners. So yan ang apat na magiging guide natin. Okay? So the first one, sabi natin, there's one managing partner. Dito, we have to differentiate whether the managing partner was appointed in the articles of the partnership or after the constitution of the uh, partnership. Kasi... If a managing partner is appointed in the articles of partnership, unang una, he can execute all acts of administration in good faith and he cannot be opposed. No? Kasi nga kasama sa mga obligations din ng isang partner is to abide by the decisions of the managing partner. Okay? Nevertheless, the authority of the managing partner may be revoked pero dalawa ang kailangan mo. No? Una is that you have a just or lawful cause. Pangalawa, vote of the controlling interests of the partners. When we talk about controlling interests, ito na yung percentage of ownership. Okay? Not just the share in the profits or surpluses. So, dalawa ang magiging kailangan. As opposed to a managing partner who was appointed after the partnership has already been constituted, pareho naman sila in the sense that they can execute all acts of administration in good faith, pero ang revocation ng authority ng managing partner after the partnership has been constituted will not even require, no? does not require uh, just or lawful cause anymore. Controlling interest na lang. No? So, hindi na kailangan ng just or lawful cause. As opposed kasi sa managing, partners in, managing partner in the Articles of Partnership, ang premise niyan is that there are grounds no? already provided in the articles as to what will be just or lawful cause for the revocation of a managing partner's authority. Okay, so again, uh, sa managing partner appointed in the Articles of Partnership, dalawa ang requirement to revoke the authority, just in lawful cause and vote of the controlling interest. Yung managing partner appointed after the partnership has been constituted will require only vote of the controlling interest. No? Wala na yung just or lawful cause requirement. All right? Now, the second uh, set of rules will be when there are multiple managing partners. And tatlo pa ang magiging sitwasyon under this particular group. No? Number one is when there is a stipulation that no managing partner may act without the consent of the others. So in that case, binding a stipulation na yan. So in order to perform an act of administration, the consent of all the managing partners will be necessary no? para maging valid yung act na yan. Okay? Na pangalawa, kung wala namang stipulation but there is specification of duties. So kung kunwari, meron kang partner na head ng HR, may partner ka na head ng accounting, may partner ka na head ng procurement, no? they uh, will have or they can perform all acts of administration within their respective duties. No? So yung head ng procurement can choose the supplier, the head of the procurement can also enter into uh, contracts to purchase uh, materials, no? raw materials or supplies of the uh, partnership. Okay? And individually, they cannot be opposed by the other managing partners. No? Kung ang decision ng managing partner ng procurement ay itong supplier na to, hindi siya pwedeng kontrahin ng managing partner for HR kasi kanya-kanya sila ng mga gawain. No? 
end. However, ang madalas na tatanong na tinatanong pagdating sa board exam is the third situation. The third situation will be walang uh, specification ng duties and wala ring stipulation that requires the consent of all the others. Ano ngayon ang mangyayari dyan? Each partner okay, may separately execute all acts of administration or stated otherwise, each managing partner uh, will have authority, no? Uh, equal authority to perform any act of administration. Now, as a consequence, dahil equal ang kanilang authority as managing partners on all matters, okay, or all acts of the administration, then any of the other managing partner can oppose, okay, the decision of the other managing partners. In which case, na magkaroon ng opposition, how do we settle the opposition? It will be decided by a majority vote of the managing partners per head count. Ibig sabihin, hindi natin i-consider dito ang kanilang controlling interest. No? Ang tinitignan na lang natin yung head count ng managing partners. Okay? However, if there will be a tie, okay, kung kunwari dalawa or apat ang managing partners mo, so parehong uh, tie ang botohan, then tsaka lang may involve ang lahat na ng partners and the basis now for the decision will be the controlling interest and no longer the head count. Okay? So again, each partner has equal authority to execute any act of administration. As a consequence, pwede i-oppose. Pag nagkaroon ng opposition, it will be settled by a majority vote of the managing partners only. Ha? Hindi kasali pa yung ibang partners. But if there is a tie, tsaka natin i-involve lahat ng partners and the basis now will be the controlling Interest. So, in order for you to visualize this particular rule, let's take this illustration. So, A, B, C, D, and E are partners of A, B, C, D, E partnership with the following percentage of ownership. So, C, A, my 15%, C, B, my 10%, C, C, 15%, then C, D, 20, and C, E, 40%. Okay? Ngayon, A, B, and E are appointed as managing partners without stipulation, not requiring uh, the consent of all managing partners and wala rin specification of duties, which means nandito tayo ngayon doon sa third situation na pinag-usapan natin kanina concerning two or more or multiple managing partners. No? So, in this case, any of A, B, and E can perform any act of administration. That's why A wanted to purchase raw materials from X. No? Nagkataon dito, so yan nga, B, and, or B or E may validly oppose the decision of A to purchase from X kasi nga, they have equal rights in performing acts of administration. So if A can choose the supplier, then the other managing partners can equally oppose such decision. No? Now, as a consequence, if E is the one who oppose, no, it will be settled again by head count, majority vote of the managing partners. So si B, kung ang kampihan niya si A, sila nakagad ang majority and the decision of A will prevail already. No? So, at this point, again, headcount ang ating basis, kaya we don't consider the respective interest. Kaya kahit pinagsama mo ang share ni A at B, 25% lang, compared sa interest ni E na 40%, no, hindi nagmamatter. Kaya headcount lang, mag, magpe-prevail ang decision ni B at ni A. Kasi they are the majority compared to E alone, without regard to their controlling interest. Now, Assuming, however, na dalawa lang no, ang managing partners natin, si A at si B. And of course, they oppose each other. Automatic na yan na magkakaroon ng tie. No? Kasi alam nga namang i-oppose mo, tapos ang iboto mo rin sa botohan yung kinalaban mo. No? So in that case, dahil may tie, that's the, the opposition will be settled by a vote of all the partners based on their controlling interest na. No? Kaya in this case, na dalawa managing partners from si A at si B, kung kunwari si E, ay kumampi kay A, then sila na ang magpe-prevail kasi 55% na ng controlling interest yung side nila. No? A having 15% and E has 40%. So this, dito naman sa part na to, wala tayong pakialam sa headcount ng partners. So kahit si uh, C at si B ay kumampi kay uh, B, no? na tatlo sila compared sa dalawa lang si A at si A, it doesn't matter. Kasi ang tinitingnan na natin pag involve na lahat ng partners ay controlling interest na. So I hope this particular rule is clear no? kasi very common topic ito pagdating sa board exam. No? Now, the third situation, sabi natin walang managing partner that this, there is a stipulation that no partner cannot act without the support of the other partners or stated otherwise, the consent of all the partners is necessary in order to perform an act of administration. No? But as an exception to that rule, okay, kung may imminent danger of grave or irreparable injury to the partnership, then pwede nang gumalaw yung partners kahit wala yung 
uh, consent ng lahat no or hindi unanimous ang vote kasi it is necessary to save the partnership already or to avoid imminent danger or grave of of grave or irreparable injury okay and the last situation is there is no agreement as to the management or walang managing partner and wala ring stipulation that requires the consent of all the partners no in which case the each partner will be considered an agent of the partnership and any of them no can perform acts of administration but take note similar to multiple managing partners dahil equal lang kanilang right to perform acts of administration any one of them can oppose no but with regards to opposition paano isi-settle yan diretso na sa controlling interest kasi lahat ng partners ay kasali kaya wala na dito yung majority vote ng managing partners na part no diretso na kagad sa pag determine ng controlling interest all right but as an exception okay bawal ang important alterations to immovable property which will as a rule require still the consent of all the partners no kahit pa walang agreement as to management important alterations to immovable property still requires the consent of all the partners even if the important alteration will be useful to the partnership but except still no kung may isa lang na nagmamatigas na partner kaya hindi niya uh, binigay yung consent niya to the important alteration you can uh, go to court no and uh, the court can allow you to perform the act even if some other partners would contradict no particularly if the refusal to give consent on the part of the other partners will be prejudicial to the interest of the partnership bakit kailangan pang may korte because whether the refusal is prejudicial to the interest of the partnership is a question of fact no na kailangan mo nang magkaroon ng hearing and trial to determine kung talaga bang may ganyang uh, resulting prejudicial uh, or uh, when the withholding of the consent is prejudicial to the interest of the partnership all right so those are the four rules of management of a partnership so other uh, rights of a partner na hindi pa natin na cover kanina will include to associate another person in his share literally kaya ang tawag sa auditing firm ng mga staff ay associate no kasi they are supposedly taken by the partner within uh, or under him in the sense na sa ang primary liable for that particular associate okay but take note that the associate is not a partner no imagine naman napakarami empleyado ng mga auditing firm kung lahat sila ay i-treat mo as, as partner no now another will be to inspect and copy the partnership books in relation to the obligations of the partner to maintain the partnership books uh, generally in the principal place of business okay and to demand a formal account kailan pwede kang magdemand ng formal accounting So a partner who is wrongfully excluded from the partnership business or possession of its property pwede na siyang magdemand ng formal account and with regards sa uh, stipulation granting such right and as we have already mentioned earlier with regards secret profits no the partner who earned the secret profits will be the one liable to account for such secret profits and others okay whenever it will be just and reasonable so yan na rules on management and other rights of a partner Okay, so kasama pa yung ask for dissolution at the proper time. The right to compensation is that actually a right that is granted by law, no? Kasi the partner will only have a right to compensation if there is a stipulation to that effect. And a partner has the right of reimbursement for any advance, no, that he made for expenses of the partnership. Kakaiba lang ito kasi the law itself attaches already the liability of the partnership for interest, no? from the time the expense was made so kahit wala pang demand coming from the partner interest already runs at the time the partner sa uh, spent no or advance the uh, expense of the partnership all right so we now come to dissolution and winding up dalawa na lang topics natin ito and limited partnership so dissolution as we have already mentioned a while ago is the change in the relation of the partners okay either because may natanggal or dahil may dinagdag basta may nagbago sa relationship or sa setup ng mga partners then it will be dissolved already no now partnership however is not terminated upon dissolution kasi magkakaroon pa ng winding up of affairs no pero as a consequence that we will discuss later the partnership can no longer enter into a contract that will uh, further the the business of the partnership no bawal na kasi lahat ng mga kontratang papasukin na lang nila as a rule will be limited to liquidation and 
winding up. That's why the next stage after the solution will be winding up. Yan na nga yung liquidation stage. And once the business has been wound, wound up already or liquidated, that will be the termination stage. In which case, the partnership ceases to exist for all material respects. No? Wala na talagang partnership to speak of. Ayan. There are two sets of groups as to the causes for dissolution. Extrajudicial causes will be those that do not require court intervention. And the other one will be judicial causes na kailangan uh, meron pang decision ng korte. Yung extrajudicial causes is further divided into three. No? The first one will be without violation of the agreement between the partners. In which case, walang tao or walang partner who will be liable for damages. No? Kasi the partnership was rightfully dissolved. Okay? So the first one will be uh, pagdating ng definite term or pagkatapos mata uh, if the particular undertaking has already been uh, fulfilled. No? In which case, sabi nga natin, it will result in the dissolution except if the partners will continue the business, it will be regarded as a partnership at will. No? And with regards to of course, partnership at will, anytime no, a partner can dissolve the partnership already in good faith and he will not be liable for damages. Kasi wala namang definite term na hinihintay or walang particular undertaking na hinihintay matapos. No? Then, uh, by express will of any of the partners who have not yet assigned their interests or suffered them to be charged for their separate debts, either before or after the termination of any specified term or undertaking. And lastly, by the expulsion of a partner from the business for a valid reason. So an example there will be uh, an industrial partner no, who engaged in another business, sabi natin prohibited if he he does, sabi natin, he can be excluded from the partnership. That can be an example of an expulsion of a partner. So in all these cases, walang magiging liability for damages ang partner, even if they cause the dissolution of the partnership. So the second group now will be those with violation. So in contravention to the agreement between the parties or partners, where the circumstances do not permit a dissolution. So idea dito is, for example, uh, there is a specified undertaking or a specified term no? and hindi pa na kompleto yung undertaking or hindi pa dumarating ang term. In which case, pwede bang i-dissolve ng partner? Pwede. Yun nga lang, it will be in contravention to the agreement. So the partner has the right, okay, to or uh, has the power rather, to dissolve the partnership but not the right to dissolve the partnership. No? So kaya yan, the partnership may be dissolved with or without contravention to the agreement. Ang pinagkaiba lang, if it is dissolved in contravention to the agreement, the partner who causes the dissolution will be liable for damages. Pero pwede ba niyang i-dissolve? Yes. No? That will be the answer. Kaya yung, yung kaso na ito ni Ortega versus Court of Appeals, itong uh, attorney Nina, if I'm not mistaken, no? is a partner in a law firm. Okay? Tapos at, oh, on one, one day, sinulatan niya yung mga ibang partners, sabi niya ayoko na maging partner sa partnership na ito. Kasi ang pangit ng pagtrato sa mga junior lawyers. No? Pangalawa, sabi niya, ang bababa ng sweldo nila. Imagine kung ganyan lahat ng partners. <laughs> ang saya sana kung ganyan lahat ng partners na ang baba ng sweldo ng staff ko, tatasa. Anyway, so he wanted to dissolve the partnership already. Ang naging argument dito ng uh, other partners is that may specified purposes no? na nakalagay sa kanilang articles of partnership nang sabi nila, ibig sabihin daw the law firm is a partnership with a particular undertaking. And sabi ng SEC, hindi. No? Kasi kung ganyan na magiging interpretation, then lahat ng mga partnership na may purposes ay for under, specified undertaking na and wala nang magiging partnership at will, no? which is not something that is supposedly contemplated by law kasi nagbigay ang batas ng partnership at will. Okay? So, uh, but sabi ng Supreme Court dito, even if, assuming no, that there is a specified duration or a fixed term or a specific undertaking because there was a particular purpose, pwede pa rin i-dissolve ng partner. No? Kasi nga among partners, mutual agency exists. Kaya dito in-apply again yung concept ng delectus personae na sinasabi natin kanina. No? One of the Latin maxims that applies in uh, the creation or establishment of a partnership. 
hindi ko na makita kung saan yung consulate. Anyway, so yeah, nakita yung Delectus Personae. No? Kaya ang sinasabi is that the partner has the power, although not necessarily the right to dissolve the partnership. Kaya when he wants to dissolve the partnership, he can, but if it is unjustified, he shall be liable for damages. Yun lang ang nagiging difference. Pero kung ang tanong ay pwede, yes. It's just that there will be liability for damages. All right? And the third group, the third group of uh, extrajudicial causes will be those resulting from operation of law. Okay? Which means automatic. No? Hindi na kailangan pa ng action from any of the partners. Unang-una dito will be any event that will make the business of the partnership unlawful. In which case, magiging illegal ang kanilang object. So ang idea dito is that the illegality of the business of the partnership is subsequent no? to the uh, start of the partnership. Kasi kung illegal na siya to begin with, it is void from the beginning. Kaya ngayon yung may confiscation ng any profits no? in favor of the government or the state. Pero if it was lawful and eventually became unlawful, then it will be dissolved by operation of law. Okay? Another thing, dito dalawa ang kailangan natin tandaan. No? Number one, is there is a specific thing that was contributed by the partner and hindi lang use of rock ang binigay niya. No? Uh, but the thing itself, but it perished before delivery. No? The idea is that the partner will not be able to perform his obligation to contribute. That's why the partnership will be deemed dissolved by operation of law. Ngayon, paano if the loss of the thing happened after the, the delivery? No? Or uh, yes, the delivery of uh, the promised contribution. Ba, pwede pa bang ma-dissolve ang partnership? Pwede kung use of rock lang ang kanyang binigay. No? Kung binigay niya ang property mismo, uh, the title to the property, not just the use of rock, but it perished after delivery, then walang extinguishment or walang dissolution. No? The only thing that will happen there is that the partnership will bear the risk of loss. Kasi ownership has already been transferred to the partnership. So again, kailan pwede ma-dissolve with regards to loss of the thing? Number one, before delivery, okay, if what was contributed is a specific or determinate thing because the partner will no longer be able to uh, comply with his obligation. No? Pangalawa, if after delivery and what was contributed is the use of rock only no? and not the, the, the property itself that perished. Okay? So yeah, I hope that's clear. Okay. Another ground will be death of a partner, okay, which I've already mentioned, insolvency of any partner of the partnership, and civil interdiction. Civil interdiction, as some of you may be aware already, no, is uh, an accessory penalty to imprisonment. Okay. But basically, the person is prohibited from managing his property or uh, other affairs. Kaya a um, partner who suffers civil interdiction will also cease to become a partner. Like, hindi na siya pwede magmanage ng kanyang mga affairs. No? That's why the law itself dissolves the partnership. What I want you to be peculiar, what's actually peculiar here is insolvency. No? Kasi mamaya, when we get to the judicial causes, one of the judicial causes na pwedeng gawing twist pagdating sa exam is insanity. No? You will notice insanity is not an extrajudicial cause. It is a judicial cause. Kailangan may judicial declaration of insanity bago mag-result in dissolution of the partnership. No? Pero kung ang partner ay naging insolvent, di ba, pwede na kaagad ma-dissolve. So parang ang datingan tuloy is that to become a partner in a partnership, mas importante yung may pera ka kesa yung baliw ka. Pag baliw ka, hindi agad-agad ma-dissolve. Pag wala ka ng pera or insult, your liabilities are more than your assets, automatically dissolve na ang partnership by operation of law. Alright? Now, so we now go to judicial causes. Judicial causes is when the partner has been declared insane yan nga, in a judicial proceeding, no? unlike insolvency which dissolves the partnership by operation of law, okay? or when he is incapable of performing his part in the partnership contract or guilty of a conduct that will affect the uh, business prejudicially, okay? or any willful, persistent committing of a breach of the partnership agreement. No? Or Otherwise, he conducts himself in a, mat in a manner that uh, relates to the partnership business that is not reasonably practicable to carry the business. Kaya ipapa-dissolve na lang. No? Or uh, the business of the partnership may only be continued at a loss okay? and other circumstances. You will notice kasi itong mga grounds for judicial causes, no? that's why they are judicial causes, is that there are questions of fact. No? Merong kailangang i-establish muna through a trial or a hearing. Kaya kinakailangan po na ng desisyon ng korte before the partnership may be 
dissolve. All right? So those are the extrajudicial and judicial causes for dissolution of a partnership. So what will be the effect? Unang-una, the mutual agency will be terminated. Okay? Anong epekto niyan? Uh, as a rule, the partners can no longer enter into contracts that will bind the partnership. No? Kasi nga, terminated na ang mutual agency. That's why they can no longer act in behalf of the partnership and bind the partnership for such acts. No? But take note, dito nagiging specific tayo, depende sa ground ng dissolution. Okay? If the cause of the dissolution is acts, insolvency, or death, o yung tinatawag nating aid, no? para ma-terminate ang mutual agency, kailangan muna nabigyan ng notice ang partners. So, or stated otherwise, if for example, uh, namatay ang partner ng December 31, 2020, pero hindi pa nakapagbigay ng notice, on January 5, 2021, yung isang partner entered into a contract. Magiging binding pa ba sa partnership? Yes. Kasi he entered into the contract to bind the partnership before he received the notice. No? Yan ang nagiging epekto nito. Unlike if the grounds will be other than, okay, acts insolvency or debt are not aid, then the mutual agency will be terminated even without notice to the other partners. Or stated otherwise, dahil terminated na mutual agency, whatever contracts uh, that the partners enter into in behalf of the partnership is no longer binding you know, or will not be binding to the partnership. But of course, there are still exceptions. No? Mayroon pa rin mga acts that may be binding even after the dissolution of the partnership. Number one, if it is in relation to the winding up of the affairs of the partnership or in relation to the liquidation. Or if the creditor or the other party to the contract had no notice of the dissolution. Hindi niya alam na dissolved na pala ang partnership. So binding pa rin to protect such third party or the such Creditor. Nevertheless, no, even after dissolution, the partners are allowed to continue the partnership. Okay? And the continuance will still dissolve the partnership and a new partnership will be created. No? Ang mangyayari lang dyan is that the creditors of the old partnership will become the creditors of the new partnership as well. Who will be, uh, Or even that of the person who continues the business. No? Ang premise dito is that walang magiging liquidation na part. No? Kasi itutuloy lang into the new partnership yung affairs ng old partnership that was already dissolved. Alright? Now, we go to winding up or liquidation. The question here will be the process. Unang-una, no? So, the process of liquidating the partnership assets uh, is what we call liquidation. Ang premise dito, ibibenta lahat ng assets ng partnership and the proceeds of the sale will be to satisfy the claims against the partnership with regards to the creditors bago mag-distribute to the partners. No? Pero sino ba ang pwedeng maging liquidator? Uh, any par party who did not wrongfully cause the dissolution. Okay? Pwedeng siya ang maging uh, liquidating partner or liquidator. Sandali siya, sasaksa ko ang aking charge. Anyway, so, who will be the liquidator? Any party who did not wrongfully cause the dissolution? Or if all the partners are dead already, the last legal representative or the legal representative of the last surviving partner. But as a requirement, dapat hindi insolvent itong legal representative na ito. No? And lastly, it can also be done by the court, in which case you call it judicial liquidation. No? Upon cause shown by a partner, his legal representative or an assignee. Nevertheless, kahit naman uh, korte ang, ang mag-liquidate, mag appoint lang din siya na magiging liquidator, which sometimes can be a partner also. No? Allow din naman yan. Alright? Kaya dito papasok yung kaso nito, no? na prime, proper, uh, prime link properties. Ang nangyari dito, dalazating magats are landowners somewhere in Tagaytay ito. No? Tapos, they had a joint venture agreement with prime link properties and development corporation, which we'll just call PPDC, to develop a track of land. So, they entered into a joint venture. Itong sila sa ating magas na magbibigay ng lupa. PPDC will uh, shoulder the costs of the materials, labor, to improve no, the uh, particular land of the Lazatine magas. Pagkatapos, uh, ang nangyari dito, 
uh, the PPDC uh, sent financials to the Lazatine Magas, tas parang nagdududa, no? Ang Lazatine Magas, na parang bakit bumababa yung profits as we expand the improvement. So, ang ginawa nila, kinasuha nila ang PPDC on the ground of fraud and the court already decided na meron gang fraud on the part of PPDC kasi nagkaroon ng mga under declaration of revenues, no? So, uh, <clears throat> uh, PP, uh, the court then uh, ordered the dissolution of the partnership then PPDC na currently in possession supposedly na mga improvements were ordered to turn over the possession of the uh, joint venture properties no the land and the improvements to uh, the Lazatine Bagas so dito maraming problema ang PPDC una ang problema nila bakit daw uh, bakit daw bakit kailangan no na i-turn over nila ang possession ng land and improvements to the Lazatine Bagas kung dissolve na ang partnership pangalawa bakit daw binibenta or uh, why did the Lazatine Magats enter into contracts of sale concerning the improvements which technically PPDC should be the owner kasi sila ang gumasas ng improvements. No? Pangatlo, they are already requiring the return of their contributions. No? Uh, particularly the costs in relation to the improvements placed on the land of the Lazatine Magats. Okay? So yan ang tatlong problema niya. Sabi ng Supreme Court unang-una, will be the rules applicable. Kasi joint ventures is a concept under common law. Okay? Uh, that's why it will be governed by the rules of partnership. In fact, sabi dito ng Supreme Court, the only difference between a partnership and a joint venture is generally uh, a corporation cannot enter into a partnership. No? Kaya dyan mo makikita na luma na ang kaso na to. Kasi sa revised corporation code ngayon, allowed na. Okay? Allowed na ang uh, corporation to form a partnership. Okay, kaya the general principles of partnership can be applicable to the joint ventures whenever there are circumstances that are not covered by uh, their agreement. No? So, as a consequence, in-apply tuloy ang law, law on partnership to the case of the Lazatine Magas and PPDC. Kaya ang mangyayari dito, since the Lazatine Magas were able to prove fraud, okay, and they are not parties, or uh, they are the partner in that case, no, who did not wrongfully cause the dissolution, they are allowed to become the liquidating partner. Okay? Anong magiging effect niya na sila ang liquidating partner? They will have rightful possession. So dapat talagang i-transfer kanila, sa kanila ang possession because as liquidators, sila dapat ang mag-facilitate ng liquidation which will cover also selling the properties of the joint venture in order to settle the liabilities and to distribute any remaining proceeds to the partners no? or the venturers for that in that case. So doon sa pangatlong problema naman ng Lasatin Magats, bakit daw hindi pa binabalik ang kanilang uh, contribution or what they spent for the improvement, sabi ng korte, at at kasi masyado. No? Kasi nga nililiquidate pa, kaya nga binibenta ang assets para merong pang liquidate muna ng partnership credits. And dahil hindi pa nababayaran ang creditors, hindi pa talaga pwedeng ibalik ang capital contribution ng mga partners. No? So I hope this is a very good case with regards to the liquidation of the partnership. All right? Now, as to the distribution of assets or the proceeds of the sale of the assets for that matter, of course, priority will be provided to the creditors no? who are not partners or third-party creditors if we may. Okay? Now, pagkatapos silang mabayaran at may natira pa, then saka lang babayaran yung partners who are at the same time creditors uh, in the sense na ang ibabalik muna sa kanila will be their advances or their uh, credits okay, with regards the obligations of the partnership, no? not muna for their capital and profits. Pangatlo, may matitira pa at ibabalik ang capital contribution ng mga partners. And kung may matitira pa, tsaka lang ibibigay ang kanilang share sa profits which technically is the surplus already of the partnership. Important ito I, I, in... in face-to-face -face discussions, I would have had this side-by-side -side with limited partnership kasi sa limited partnership, mas priority ibalik muna ang profits bago ang capital. No? Unlike in a general partnership, inuuna yung capital bago ibalik ang profits or i-distribute ang share sa profits. Alright? Now, yun nga. Yun nga yun <laughs> Alright, so lastly, partners liabilities. Sabi natin na general partner will have uh, unlimited liability. No? That if the partnership assets are not sufficient to cover the liabilities of the partnership, the assets are not sufficient to cover the liabilities, then the partners may be liable up to their personal assets. Now, 
pa, in this case, however, paano kung si partner mismo ay insolvent na? No? Ibig sabihin, hindi na rin sapat ang kanyang assets to pay for his own liabilities, more so for the liabilities of uh, the partnership. No? In which case, the properties of the separate partners or the, prop the separate property of the partner will be distributed in this order. Una pa ring babayaran will be his own creditors. Yung mga creditors niya muna. No? Kung may matitira lang, tsaka ipambabayad doon sa unpaid partnership creditors. Kung may matitira pa, tsaka lang ibibigay doon sa partners by way of their contribution. Alright? So, yan ang distribution as to the personal properties or separate properties of a partner who has become insolvent. And the last portion of our webinar, ah, sabi ko na nga ba, ano, kung mag, mag go over time. Pero konti na to. Will be limited partnership. Okay? So, a limited partnership is one that is formed by two or more persons. Okay? Having as members one or more general partners or one or more limited partners. Or stated otherwise, a limited partnership has at least one general partner and at least one limited partner. Okay? Hindi pwedeng lahat limited partners and of course, hindi rin pwedeng lahat ay general partners. No? So, Limited partnership, at least one general partner, at least one limited partner. All right? Now, as we have already established a while ago, a limited partner's liability will be limited to his capital contribution, hence the name, no? and such that even uh, after the exhaustion of partnership assets, he cannot be made to contribute or hindi pwedeng uh, ipambayad ang kanyang separate property to third parties. All right? Now, for the formation required na dapat merong certificate. Okay, ang tinatawag nating Certificate of Limited Partnership which will be filed with the SEC. No? This is very important because if you fail to execute a certificate and file it with the SEC, then the consequence is that the partnership will be treated as a general partnership. No? Yan ang naging consequence pag defective ang formation. And filing with the SEC of the certificate is, uh, what do you call this, the bare minimum. No? The minimum in order to constitute... Uh, substantial compliance with the formation requirement. So, the name of the partnership has to have the word limited or at least LTD to at least apprise the, the third parties no, that they are a limited partnership na meron mga partners na limited lang ang liability. Okay? In which case, kung wala, no, yung word na limited or LTD, then it is treated as a general partnership also. Okay. Ano pang ilalagay dito sa certificate? The character of the business, the location of the principal place of business, and the information concerning each member and indicating whether they are general or limited partners. Now, and the term for which the partnership is to exist. Okay. The contributions, uh, if it is cash, the amount, if it is property, the uh, description and the agreed value of the property or otherwise stated, merong inventory. No? na kailangan ding gawin as to valuation. Now, any additional contributions that will be required uh, from each limited partner must also be indicated in the certificate. No? Uh, importante ito to establish liability kasi later on, with regards the amount of the contributions sa number 6 no? and the amount of the additional contributions that are required sa number 7, kung magkakaroon ng difference sa actual na contribution ng limited partner, he will be treated as a debtor of the partnership. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Now, the time if agreed upon when the contribution of each limited partner will be returned. Okay. The idea is that even if the partnership will be a going concern, hindi pa magsasara, walang disol dissolution or liquidation, pwede nang ibalik ang um, uh, contribution ng limited partner no? within a specific due date indicated in the certificate. Paano ngayon kung wala itong date na ito? Pero bang instances na pwedeng ibalik ang capital contribution ng limited partner? Yes. No? Of course, upon uh, notice given to all other members, so six months notice yan, pwede nang ibalik ang kanyang capital contribution or uh, on the dissolution of the partnership. Okay? Of course, ibabalik sa kanya kasi mag-deliquidate. No? Now, Another thing that has to be indicated in the certificate will be the share of the prof uh, share in the profits or other compensation by way of income. In fact, no, pwede ka pang mag-provide ng priority. Pwede kang magkaroon ng mas preferred limited partner as compared to the other limited partner. Pero kung hindi ilalagay yung preference na yan sa certificate, they will be treated in the same manner. No? Pare-pareho ang magiging treatment. Now, another thing will be a right of a limited partner to substitute an assignee. Sabi natin kanina, the limited partner's interest may be the subject of an assignment, pero yung assignee does not become a limited partner. No? But 
the limited partner may have, the assignor limited partner may have the right in the certificate to substitute the assignee. In which case, tatawagin na natin siyang substitute limited partner. Hindi ko alam bakit nilagyan pa ng term na substitute kasi technically, he's just a limited partner also. No? Na, so, ayan, the, ne- the assignee does not necessarily become a substitute limited partner. So, ayan, the substitute limited partner is a person admitted with all the rights of the limited partner who has died or who has assigned his partner. Par- uh, interest in the partnership provided no that all partners consent or kahit hindi hindi ka kailangan din ng consent ng lahat ng partners kung yung assigner has the right okay to substitute under uh, the certificate of limited partnership okay so as we mentioned also a while ago aside from assignment the interest of a limited partner may also be the subject of an assignment or execution pero unlike the interest of a general partner the redemption of the limited partners or interest can only be done with general partners' property. No? Hindi pwede gamitin ng partnership property to redeem the interest of a limited partner. Compared dun sa interest ng general partner, pwede both or either okay? ang ipang-redeem natin. Okay? So, the right, uh, subject to the following limitation. Hmm. Ayan nga. The right if given to the partners to admit additional limited partners and the right if given, ah, ito rin yung mga pwedeng ilagay pa sa Certificate of Limited Partnership. No? Yun nga yung sinabi natin kanina kung magkakaroon ng more preferred limited partners if we may call it that. No? Kasi may priority. But again, if there's no nothing indicated in the certificate that they will have uh, priority over other limited partners, they will be treated in the same uh, manner. No? Now, uh, lahat ito yung dapat na ni, mali ang numbering ko. Dapat yan yung mga additional things that has to be indicated in the certificate. The right, uh, if given to the general partners to continue the business, okay? otherwise, kasi kung hindi nilagay sa certificate no, of limited partners, uh, limited partnership, yung right ng general partners to continue the business, they can only do so if all the partners would consent. No? Pero kung uh, kahit yung limited partners have, have to give their consent. Kung, kung nilagay naman yan sa certificate of limited partnership, then the consent of the limited partners will no longer be necessary no? para makontinue ang business. So again, to continue the business upon death, retirement, civil interdiction, insanity, or insolvency of a general partner, which dissolves a limited partnership as well, no? the right must be indicated in the certificate or the consent of all the partners, including the limited partners, is uh, given. No? And lastly, the right if given for a limited partner to demand or receive property other than cash for his contribution. Or stated otherwise, no? as a general rule, cash ang pagbalik ng capital contribution ng limited partner, hindi pwedeng under tangible property, except only if that right to receive property other than cash is also indicated in the certificate of limited partnership. All right? So, there are three limitations on a limited partner. He cannot be an industrial partner. Money or property lang ang pwede niyang i-contribute. No? Pangalawa, his name should not appear in the partnership. There are two exceptions as we have mentioned earlier. Is that number one, kung yung surname niya na nandun sa partnership name is actually the surname of a general partner. No? Or the partnership has already been operating in such name before pa siya naging limited partner or in other words no itong mga exceptions na ito yung name ng limited partner na nasa partnership name or firm name is not really him okay ibang tao kapangalan lang niya yun nakalagay doon sa name ng partnership and last limitation is that they cannot participate in the management of a partnership kaya nga yung capitalist partner natin kanina no who supposedly not allowed to engage in a business of a similar industry to the partnership pwede kung limited partner lang siya no, sa other business kasi nga, he cannot participate in the management. Ano ngayon ang consequences or consequence if ma-violate ang tatlong limitation or any of these three limitations, then the limited partner will be treated as a general partner. Kaya kailangan din maingat kayo pag nagsasagot ng uh, problem type questions no? or situational questions sa exam kasi minsan hindi mo mapapansin na sinabing limited partner si partner pero nandun siya sa firm name in which case he will be liable as a general partner no 
Ang nagiging consequence niyan, more particularly, will be yung rules natin kanina na pinag-usapan with regards sa partner's liability after exhaustion of partnership assets. Kasi kung limited partner, wala na sana liability. Pero kung na-violate ang kahit ano dito sa tatlong ito, magkakaroon pa rin ng liability dahil he will be treated as a general partner. Now, the rights of a limited partner is generally the same no? as that of a... Uh, a uh, limited partner is the same generally as that of a general partner. So inspection with regards to the books or requiring them to be kept in the principal place of business, except, of course, if there is stipulation to the contrary, uh, to demand true and full information, ganyan din ang karapatan ng general partner, to have the solution in winding up decreed by court. Ang idea dito is to uh, dispel the misconception na limited partner lang siya, hindi siya pwede mag-dissolve ng partnership. Pwede din. No? Pwede din naman. All right? Okay. Now, he can also receive a share in the profits, yan nga, which will be indicated in the certificate of limited partnership. Pero ang kanyang uh, return of contribution cannot be made until you know, all the liabilities of the partnership, uh, except those owing to other partners, has already been paid. You know, or stated otherwise, the assets of the partnership must be sufficient to cover third-party creditors bago ibalik ang contribution ni limited partner or the consent of all the members is had unless yun nga sabi natin no uh, the right to demand uh, the return is already indicated or the due date for the return of the contribution is already in the certificate of limited partnership so hindi na kailangan ng consent of the other partners okay or when the certificate is cancelled and so or so amended as to, as to set forth the withdrawal or reduction all right so, rightfully demand, kailan ulit? Tatlong instances ito. Number one, on the solution of the partnerships. Ibig sabihin kasi magkakaroon ng liquidation. Pangalawa, on the date specified in the certificate, kung meron, kung wala, upon six months notice, which we have already mentioned a while ago. Okay? Now, he is also required, uh, the partners, other partners are required to get the consent of the limited partners as well in all the following acts, which looks actually quite similar, no? Doon sa ating mga acts of the partners that requires the consent of all the partners. Yung hindi covered ng apparent authority. So, do any act in contravention to the certificate or which would make it impossible to carry the business of the partnership, confess judgment, okay? possess partnership property, admit a person as a general partner, admit a person as a limited partner, continue the business of the property. But take note, no? with regards to letter E, F and G, the general partners may, okay? Pwede nilang gawin yung E, F and G if that right is granted in the certificate of limited partnership, even without the consent of the limited partners, okay? Kaya lang, kung hindi yan naka-indicate doon, magagawa lang nila yung E, F and G kung nandun sa certificate of limited partnership, okay? Now, a limited partner may also loan an amount or loan money to the uh, partnership no or be the contracting party in a transaction but there are two restrictions that will apply to this particular uh, right no of a limited partner unang una he cannot hold or receive as a collateral security any partnership property so hindi ka pwedeng mag pledge hindi ka pwedeng mag mortgage ng partnership property in favor of a limited partner for his credit no or for the loans and yun nga the uh, partnership assets must be uh, sufficient to cover third-party liabilities pag siya ay babayaran na. Kasi priority pa rin natin lagi yung third-party creditors uh, before no paying the limited partners who are likewise creditors. Take note, ano magiging epekto kung ang any of these two is violated? The, treat, the, the, the transaction will be treated as in fraud of creditors, in which case it will be considered a resistible contract. So ako na rin, nagpautang itong uh, limited partner to the partnership no at uh, nag-execute ng shuttle mortgage, for example, ang partnership uh, over their equipment to secure the loan to the limited partner, the, the shuttle mortgage will be considered a resistible contract kasi it violates the first restriction. No? Kasi nga, in fraud of creditors ang magiging treatment ng batas when a transaction violates any of these two restrictions. So, with regards to dissolution and winding up, so same, no? Uh, if there is retirement, death, insolvency, insanity, or civil interdiction of a general partner, it will likewise dissolve the limited partnership. No? Except if the partnership will be continued by the remaining general partners if either the right is indicated in the certificate or with the consent of all the partners, including 
the limited partners. Paano kung kunwari si limited partner ang namatay? No? Walang magiging dissolution. Kahit pag si limited partner ang namatay, magkakaroon lang siya ng successor. Yung tinatawag natin na substitute limited partner. No? In fact, initially, yung estate niya ang magiging considered as a substitute limited partner. So pwede yung executor or administrator of the estate. Ngayon, also, as we have already mentioned, it is part of the right of a limited partner to have the partnership dissolved as well okay, uh, by judicial decree. And its affairs wind up when he rightfully but unsuccessfully demands the return of his contribution. Or kung hindi mabalik ang kanyang capital contribution, that can be a valid ground no, to judicially dissolve the partnership. Okay, so ito lang, sabi natin na may general limited partner. So parehong general partner and limited partner siya at the same time. But it has to be indicated in that certificate. Ano kayo na nagiging consequence niyan? Ang treatment sa kanya as to third parties ay general partner. No? In which case, pwede siyang uh, pagbayarin up to his personal assets by the third parties. Pero limited partner siya as to the partners. Kaya kung siya ay magbabayad, to the other to the third parties he can seek reimbursement from the other general partners yan so otherwise sabi nga natin third parties general partner siya so between the partners limited partner ang treatment sa kanya all right so liquidation sabi natin iba ang magiging distribution of partnership assets pero yung una pareho pa rin creditors other than partners pagkatapos niyan sa kayong loan ng limited partners kaya return to him what is owed to limited partners other than capital and profits pero dito na magkakaiba kasi ang uunahin muna ay profit share ng limited partners pag may natira pa tsaka lang yung kanilang capital contribution pag may natira pa tsaka lang ibabalik din sa general partners ang profit share okay or ano ang utang muna pala sa kanila if the general partners are also creditors no and after that profit share muna tsaka lang ibabalik yung capital so again the one thing to be careful with kasi sa general partnership priority i return ng capital bago ang profits pero sa limited partnership priority ang limited partners bago ang general partners pero limited partners as creditors then profits capital so then general partners na uh, loan no as creditors then profits capital all right so that is partnership law on partnership sorry nag-extend na tayo so i just wanted it to be finished anyway thank you very much everybody for attending and i hope this was helpful so again sana we can see you in uh rio so well, the enrollment is still open and hopefully we can see you there no and watch out for the other uh webinars that we have i think karim will be for tomorrow karim yeah for for financial account not mistaken anyway Thank you very much, everybody, for attending. And I hope this was helpful for all of you. And I think, may pa bang mga questions? Ano bang mangyayari after? Ano nang gagawin natin? Wala na, I think. No? That's the end. Sige. All right. Thank you, everybody, for attending. And I hope you stay safe, healthy. No? And uh, may you be productive as well while we are preparing for the May 2021 board exam. Good luck and God bless everybody. Thank you.